This is an excerpt from Inside the NHL Dream. While most of the players and other professionals in this book have, may have retired or moved on to other positions, this book gives you a realistic peek at what life looks like behind the scenes of the National Hockey League. The same rules apply to hockey as in business, whether you're in real estate, corporate finance, or energy. The number of individuals who stand out as industry superstars can be listed between 1 and 3%. Of those, the largest percentage reached success through luck, hard work, or knowing the right person other than relying solely on innate talent. It's the same in hockey. We can list a number of talented players, but only a few are ranked as legitimate superstars. The rest spend their entire careers fighting for their jobs. Should they fall short of the team's expectations, there's always somebody waiting in the wings. But does that mean superstars don't have to work hard? Most hockey insiders will tell you that working hard is the reason they're superstars. The work combined with their natural talents has pushed them to creative genius. What about the rest of the players? There may be a number of individuals on any given junior college or minor league team who have similar or lesser talents, but of them, only a handful will make it. Why? Dwayne Rollison explains, a lot of guys are on the bubble. I've got three or four friends at home who could be playing in the minors right now. They didn't want to do it after 17 or 18 years. They just didn't want to play anymore and move to the next level. That's usually the biggest things, guys not wanting it. The guys that do will put in the time and effort. They don't want to see it go to waste. They get up every morning to work out and train for the next year. During practice, they make sure they're on the first, they're the first on and last off. Agent JP Berry adds two things, skill and commitment, but often skill doesn't win out by itself. It's interesting to see how many were considered the most elite player in their town, city, or region, and when they got get to that cutoff age of 18 or 20, how many don't show up? Commitment is underestimated. It's a team sport and you're looking for people to play a role. It's the little things. The special players have that commitment. Attitude to me is always part of the commitment. It means you're putting yourself in the context of the team. Attitude can be learned. There are a lot of players who are skilled, but it might take a bit longer to incorporate the other element or all of a sudden they hit a roadblock. Sometimes they come out at 21, 22, or 23. James Patrick says, I think it's a fine line. I knew from the time I was six years old I wanted to play in the NHL. I was not the best player on the team until age 14 or 15 when I went from house, house league to tier or triple a i was a good player but i wasn't the best at 14 i became the best player on my team and at 15 i was the best in the league at 16 i went to notre dame and i was and was intimidated by the players i felt were better than me so why did i make it i know this is the same dream for about 80 percent of the other kids too maybe it was my upbringing i developed when some kids were losing their interests some of them were better players, but they steered towards girls and partying instead. That wasn't as important for me. I grew up in a family of seven kids and played on a team where fathers would be yelling at their kids, giving directions. Some parents never missed a practice, let alone a game. My dad never came to any of my practices. My mom would just drop me off. With two kids in the back seat, she would have other things to do. I think I was fortunate for that. My players gave me an opportunity to play and encouraged me, but were by no means overbearing. I guess maybe it was through passion and the dream that I was lucky enough to achieve it. Making it to the NHL training camp is the one thing, but staying in the league is another. Most play out their careers in the minor leagues. Player agent Brent Breeze explains why. There is no way to describe to a player or his family what these guys are really getting into until they're actually there. A player can be prepared for what to say in an interview, the types of programs they should be involved in, and how to act on and off the ice, but it's up to the player to actually do it. 
there are perhaps one to two kids that are ready to jump into the NHL at 18. The majority are going to end up back with their junior team or down in the minors to work their way through the system. It's a nice feeling to be drafted, but if you're a center that's been drafted by an NHL team with three top centers and two up and comers in the minor leagues, it's going to be a very difficult time for you to get your shot. You could be a goal scorer throughout your entire junior career, but when you get to the NHL, they may want to turn you into a checker. If you don't want to do it, too bad. You're out there. You're out of there. They'll just bring in the next guy. It's all a numbers game. I think the pressures alone can crush some of these players. Unless you're mentally strong, strong enough to realize that what you're getting into, it's pretty tough. It's, it's the expectations. Wayne Gretzky adds, I didn't see Gordie Howe in the late 40s, but Mario Lemieux has everything you want in a player, talent-wise, with his work ethic and his leadership. He loves the pressure. He's a great leader. I think when he came back to play this time, he came out of the shell a little bit. I really think he's enjoying it much more. He's always loved hockey. I think he loves everything that goes with it more than he like, more than he did seven or eight years ago. He always loved the game, but with that, he had to go th with all that he had to go through his back, cancer, and now he's just playing and having fun. He's getting more enjoyment now than ever. Some of his biggest games we've ever had were when we played against each other. Mario came in each night wanting to show me that he could play, and he could play. We had a really good rivalry in the sense that we pushed each other to another level. Guys like Mario and Joe Sakic will deflect the high intensity and pressure for the other guys and make it a lot easier for everyone. 